feel good about them, and it's a credit to our defensive team and our defensive coaches. Now, our weekly, uh, we, uh, we enjoy our weekly, uh, the fun we have here at the blackboard because we enjoy showing the viewers our plays of the week. Now, the play of the week was Thomas Rooks' run, but on offense, I think the play that actually sealed the game and allowed us to move the ball was a, uh, was a play that we call 64Y Spartan. All day, we had had to throw underneath Ohio State. Their rush is fierce, their coverage is very good, and we had decided that we could not throw in the intermediate zones. When we took that last drive, we decided that the only way we could do it is to try to get Scotty Golden behind the corner and into this, what we call this dead zone in here, in, in their cover, in their coverage. Jack Trudeau, of course, did a super job dropping back. The offensive line was great. Tim Brewster, was actually the key to the play because he was the guy that was supposed to occupy the safety here and allow Scotty Golden to be open. We call it 64 Y Spartan. Our other two wide receivers run down the field to occupy the rest of their secondary. But the key is Golden, open, Trudeau hitting the pass. And here we go into the, into the view, and I think we'll take another look at it. And we'll take a look at, here it is, Jack Trudeau back to pass. Scotty Golden, as we'll see, right in there, right in that zone, a tough area to defend, and a great throw by Jack Trudeau, and of course a great catch by Scotty Golden. We use that play two more times before that drive is over. The defensive play, again, Max McCartney and the defensive coaches all year have put tremendous mental pressure on the passer. The one that is the defensive play, Craig Swope comes through on a safety blitz. The, the offense fakes a running play. There's great pressure by the defense in all areas. I think Mike Johnson's in there. Their great tight end, Frank, is trying to run a short, a short pass here behind the deep man. David Edwards jumps in front, a 47-yard TD, and a great play. And I think we'll take a look at that. And here we go. You'll see in the middle of the screen there's Swope, number 12. Tom Zach's under pressure. There's David Edwards. And we have ourselves a TD that, of course, puts Illinois in the ball game and, and keeps us in the ball game through a great defensive effort. I think we'll take another look. There's Swope. There's Mike Johnson, number 85, occupying his guy. And there's David Edwards stepping in front. And we have ourselves a, a great defensive play and, again, turning the, the game around early on. Super, Dick, huh? Do you think that was all right? Amazing, That's what Mike. we're looking for, right? Absolutely. Great defense great. and uh, great victory for Illinois. And, of course, uh, we got some more games to go. No question about it. We'll be back with more right after these messages. Well, the win against Ohio State, Mike, I suppose typifies the fact you should never get up in an athletic contest and just quit. You've got to keep going to the final buzzer sounds. Yeah, well, that was a great credit to our team. And, and I want to say this, though. I think uh, Ohio State's got a lot of class. Their players were super after the game. Uh, Coach Bruce was waited around with all the commotion to say something to me. And uh, as I said, they went down hard. And I think maybe that makes it even a more sweeter victory because I think uh, when you play a team like Ohio State, you've got to earn the victory. And no matter how it comes, you're very proud. So Ohio State deserves a lot of credit, too. And I'd hate to be playing them next, i tell you that. It's nice to get them out of the way when you did, Mike. And, of course, <laughs> we've got a lot of games left to go. And you can certainly see that the Big Ten uh, had its uh, moments of, uh, of uncertainty last, uh, last Saturday because... Iowa had trouble with Purdue. You know, they, uh, the Boilermakers jumped on Iowa quick, led 14-7, to 7, but uh, they didn't score after that. Well, Iowa, of course, we know is good at home, but Purdue is a good team. And, of course, we'll talk more about them in a minute. Indiana, great to see my old buddy Sam White uh, win that game uh, for Indiana because that's a big victory for them over Michigan State. And, of course, Michigan over Northwestern, uh, that's good. It's good for both teams because that shows Northwestern hung in there. And, of course, Michigan uh, did their job, too. And, of course, as we go down next week, there you see, and we'll talk about that game of ours over at Purdue, but Michigan State goes to Ohio State. Iowa's at Michigan in a big one. Indiana, Wisconsin, and Minnesota at Northwestern. Mike, we look to Purdue, and, of course, the fact that we have to play on real grass, does that make any change at all in your plans? 
Well, it doesn't, uh, fortunately for us, because uh, Neil Stoner has done a super job of giving us a, a grass facility, a, a fenced-in grass facility, and we practice a good share of the time on grass, so I don't think it's going to be a, a, a big change for us. We'll fortunately be able to start practice on it right away on Monday, and by the end of the week, I think we're going to be okay. A lot of times that makes a big difference, because all people have is an AstroTurf facility, so, uh, but Purdue's going to be tough, Dick. Don't ever kid yourself, and I know you know that. They're going to be a tough game for us. You thought, I know, during the summer that Purdue was going to be a tough football team to play against. Campbell is a good quarterback, but uh, will there be any type of a letdown, do you think? Oh, I don't think so. Uh, frankly, uh, we did what we had to do against Ohio State. That wasn't a spectacular game, and we didn't play from start to finish. We just played when we had to and the way we had to. So we're going to play against Purdue. We know uh, what's, what's important. Well, please join us again next week at the same time. Fighting the line, I pick up a big win.